Hi, this is Kenny James, and you're listening to the FSF Podcast. Our show would like to remind you that although people may say that Super Mario Brothers is unrealistic, just remember, if a plumber jumps on your head, you're going to die, and he can take any coins you have. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund, which supports the Wish Upon a Teen Foundation that helps out sick kids when they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Red Shirt crew member 913. He'll know that when he puts on the red shirt and joins the crew of the Enterprise in their struggle against King Koopa, that he didn't leave his family destitute and without hope, because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has his back and what's left of his red shell. All right, guys, our guest today uh, is a voice actor who's helped bring to life the character of Bowser for Nintendo. Uh, but you can also hear his work on anime like Fire and Ice, Attack on Titan, Black Summoner, and there's a whole slew of other shows that our guest has uh, lent his voice to. Uh, and so yeah. we are pleased as punch to welcome Kenny James to the FSF podcast. Welcome to the show, Kenny. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, we are, finally. Well, yeah. Hey, well, you know. <laughs> best things in life are worth waiting for so you know and then there's us and then there's us and so you <laughs> sorry you waited for us but you know we're not sorry we waited for you i mean it's bowser so i'm i'm super excited about it exactly although i told my daughter i was talking to bowser and she's like oh gosh no oh, no <laughs> she may have a small issue with the uh jack black peaches song uh, you know what I love it, and I won't stop singing it. So now she is like, every yeah. time I even, I can't even walk by Peaches in the grocery store before she's like, Mom, no. No. Love yeah, that kid. I, uh, I haven't, I've only heard little snippets of it. It did not, just the snippets were enough to make me go, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, That's... I probably wouldn't enjoy the song as much as I do if it didn't annoy my four-year-old as much as it does. Yeah, see? There's well, that. Child annoyance is, is high on the list of, of any parent. When you have the opportunity to annoy a child, you take it. <laughs> yep. But also, I mean, when we're playing Mario Kart, I mean, nine times out of ten, it's the, I'm going to be Bowser. Why? Because he's big. And it's fun. <laughs> uh, all right, Kenny. So one of the things that we love to do on our show is we love to talk to our guests about their origins, how they got started, how they became who they are, what they are, you know, and, and got into the career path that they chose. Uh, so because, and we're nerds, nerds love a good origin story. So uh, in the story of Kenny James, how did Kenny James become the voice actor that we know him to be today? Oh, man, you have to go back to about, oh, my chair is so squeaky. Um, need to go back to about the year 2000 or 2001, somewhere around there. Uh, I had just gotten cable internet, and so no more dial-up and all that jazz. And uh, I don't know, something struck me one day where I was like, hey, I've got fast internet where I could download a song in like five minutes. <laughs> you know? It was insane, you know, like a three and a half meg song and it would take five minutes to download. And that was on Napster where it was coming in right. from all over. But anyway, I and you will find out I tend to digress way too much. That's fine. Okay uh, with that. <laughs> there are no rails on this crazy train. It's all fine. Yeah. So I decided, well, if I make myself a little website, I can do a voice demo all by myself and I'll be famous. And uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, <laughs> I did build a little site using like coffee cup nine. And, uh, and then went to, I went and took a course at the university of Washington uh, for commercials and the instructor guy, uh, he thought I was, you know, had something going at least for commercials so he did production work to pr produce demos for people. So I had him produce a demo. And if I hadn't had that demo in, in hand, well, on the internet, uh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sitting here. Um, but I also was in the right place at the right time. I used to work at Suburban Propane. I was a service tech for 13 years. 
And uh, yeah, I used to sell propane and propane accessories. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. I was thinking it. Yeah, a lot of people do. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was nice. working with my service manager and we were at this lady's house and we we're doing the stuff. And I remember that one of her, and this was on Bainbridge Island, Washington State. Uh, it's kind of a snooty island. I used to call it snooty island. They're, they don't like people coming on their island. Oh, man. Um, but anyway, <laughs> this lady had a smoke detector that was beeping. And it was at the top of about a 30-foot ceiling peak inside this great room of this house. And my boss decided, we've got a long enough ladder to get up there. Uh, so he's he's shaking. He climbed. I said, I'm not going up there. <laughs> climbed this ladder up to the peak of this lady's house inside and got the battery out of the smoke detector so it stopped, you know, chirping. But anyway, uh, while we were doing this, I was telling him about some jobs that I had done for a guy in Canada who was paying me like eight or nine bucks a line to to just do answering machine things, you know, where I would do impersonations of Scooby and Shaggy and, you know, or some, you know, some guy with a heavy accent, you know, and he would send me these little scripts. And, and I was like, yeah, I'm a professional voice actor. And this lady goes, oh, you do voice work. And I said, I'm trying to get started. And she goes, well, I'm a part-time producer at Bad Animals. And I go, oh yeah, I know Bad Animals. Never been there, but I know of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, she goes, do you, next thing out of her track was, do you have a demo? And I said, yes, I do. And gave her the web address. She listened to it. Her 14-year-old son listened to it. They thought, hey, this guy doesn't suck. So she sent it over <laughs> to, yeah, I know, she sent it over to the production manager at Bad Animals, and she started sending me auditions. And I auditioned for a few things. Um I think they sent me five different roles uh, in Sly Cooper 3, and I didn't get any of them. And I thought I did a pretty good job, but, you know, how do I know? And besides that, it's it, if you don't have a thick enough skin, you'll never survive auditions, you know, because right. set it and forget it. Just don't sit and agonize over, oh, I really want that. I really want it. Don't do that. Uh, it'll drive you crazy. Um, but anyway, so they recast Bowser and they sent me the audition request, but it included the script from Super Mario Sunshine. And Scott Burns was the Bowser before me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they sent me his voice tracks and, I mean, raw tracks. It wasn't you know, finished product. It was, it was the recordings. So there was bits and pieces of him, you know, talking about other stuff and all kinds of stuff. But I, um, I, I assumed because they didn't specify, I assumed that they wanted a voice match because they sent me his voice tracks. Mm -hmm. Well, I did my best Scott Burns, you know, I was Mario. How dare you disrupt my family vacation. And I, a couple of weeks later, I get an email that said, you got the job. So I was all like, well, okay, now what? You know, I had been in recording studio for music before mm -hmm. on several occasions, but mm -hmm. had never done voiceover ever. But I was pretending like I do. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, yeah, because I did. I walked in there like, all right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know what a microphone is. Sure. <laughs> Let's do this thing. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> luckily, really kind of luckily for me, the first game was um, uh, Super Mario Strikers, which may actually answer one of your next questions. But anyway, um, and there's not a lot of Bowser to that, really. I mean, nothing involved. Uh, you know, he drops in to the soccer pitch and... Mm -hmm. You know, and then ro roars and blows some fire, and then he flies away. Right. Who knew he could fly, you know? <laughs> but um, 
the second session was uh, Mario Kart Wii and the first Galaxy, and I did them both in one session. So they started they started kind of ramping up production because the Wii was fixing to come out. Mm -hmm. um, right. Because you know Strikers was on the GameCube. Yeah. Um, but anywho, that's the long story of it. I was in the right place at the right time with a produced demo in my little pause, or at least the web address where you could go listen to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's how it happened. It was just chance. But I didn't start acting until I was 40, both on stage and voice work pretty much at the same time. I decided, you know, pig-headedly that I was going to go and be an actor. Uh, so I'm going to go and I'm going to audition for a stage musical. <laughs> and I did. And I got a decent part. And it just went from there. My second show, I got the lead. So, I, you know, at the same time, I'm auditioning for stuff and wind up getting Bowser and wish it paid better. But, yeah. Don't get any, you don't get residuals on video games. So, understood. Yeah. So, a, a quick follow up to that now, because now I'm curious. Now, you see, you, you said that you went for a stage musical. Oh, so, yeah. what what was the musical that you got the lead on? Oh, the one I got the lead on. Well, the first show that I did was Man of La Mancha, and that was Dr. Carrasco, Knight of the Mirrors, and what was he called in prison? The Duke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I got that part. And I was all like, Shh, wow, cool. Um, the next thing I auditioned for after that was over was uh, Carousel. Oh. And I wound up getting Billy Bigelow after my audition and they ran me through scales and stuff. And uh, the music director was the uh, same guy who played Cervantes in the Man of La Mancha production. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I was getting ready to go to my car and they stopped me and said, hey, we just want to save a phone call. You know, we want you to play Billy. And I was all like, no. <laughs> and they were like, what? <laughs> I said, no. I go, I'm not ready for that. This is my second show ever. And you want me to bite off that much? I go, I don't know. I don't know. Uh -uh. And they were like, uh, we think you could do it. And I go, I don't know, man. That's a lot of pressure. Well, we think you can do it. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big role. It. it didn't take. It was. Yeah. A lot of singing, you know, I had lots of lines. I think the most line heavy show that I ever did, though, was um, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Mm. I was R.P. McMurphy. And that is a massive line load. Yes, it on is. Stage, on stage almost the entire time. There's a couple of times where I would have to go off, do a quick change because the scene changes real quick and then back on. In a different outfit, <laughs> you know, yeah. straight jacket. <laughs> right. I'll never forget the straight jacket change. You know, that was fun. How do you, <laughs> how do you quickly get into and out of a straight jacket? <laughs> Couple of people helping. <laughs> All I did was stand there and go like this, and they would put that thing on, and they wrap it around, and they'd start doing buckles. <laughs> oh man! And I'm all like, okay, I'm ready to go. There's no, yeah, <laughs> it's not I'm like there's an easy way. Up out of them that's kind yeah. of their point <laughs> yeah it's uh it was fun though i had a lot of fun i did probably 25 shows in 10 or 11 years that's okay. awesome. it's, it's two a year average you know right and uh but man i hate rememberizing things memorization is just the worst for me i just it's hate hard. it it's hard i wrote it's songs that i couldn't remember Back when I was in bands and stuff, mm -hmm. I had cheat sheets for songs that I wrote. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot to try to keep up there. I get it. You know, considering that I have a hard time remembering things if I don't write them down, I yeah. can't imagine having to try to memorize. Because I'm going to use that later, rememberize. Because yeah, rememberize. Memorization. Yeah, yeah that, that's yeah, not going to happen for me. If it wasn't for these things, now, oh, I'd be so screwed. I would forget so many things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. See, and, and it's funny is like, I struggle with that too, with the, I have to keep track of my schedule, my mother-in-law's schedule, because I take care of her, my daughter's schedule, what my husband's work schedule is, the podcast schedule. And then it's the, 
There, there's no way to try to keep track of everything. But you know what? I can remember stupid song lyrics that I sang in high school. Oh, quite. sure. I can remember every note. You know, I don't play guitar, but I know every note of so many guitar solos. Mm -hmm. I remember my childhood phone number that's been disconnected for 15 oh, years. I only <laughs> remember one, but it's later, you know, more like uh, junior high, high school. But I don't remember ones when I was littler than that, when we still had a rotary phone. <laughs> um, no, I'm not kidding. I'm 60. No, years I, I, I just turned 60 a few days ago. Oh, man. Um, you don't look it. I remember I, two phone numbers from my youth and one of both of them were my buddy's houses. And I can, <laughs> yeah. I remember those. I don't remember any of my own phone numbers you know, from, you know, the houses that I lived in yeah. as a kid, but my buddy's phone numbers. Yeah. Those are still etched in my brain. Yeah. I, when I, when she was saying that before, when she, she said your husband's work schedule, oh gosh, I yeah. started laughing. It's because we have a whiteboard on our refrigerator, you know, for grocery lists mm -hmm. and stuff like that. My wife had to write down her work schedule because I just couldn't remember it. Oh yeah. No, I totally sure. get that. Sure. Yeah, because she's got like days where she works nine to six, and then she's got days where it's like uh, 12 to five. And then there's a couple of days where it's 10 to four or something. I, I yeah. see it. I don't remember. I get so it. I, I get it. We have the refrigerator and go, oh, yeah, she's off at five today. OK. Yeah, we've got we've got the whiteboard calendar in our fridge, too, because then it's the we all can see. What are we doing today? How many podcast interviews are there today? Does anybody have any doctor's appointments? Is my husband covering for his coworker? Like, yeah, no, I, I get it. It's ridiculous. And now a word from our show sponsor, Level Up Savers. Their link can be found in the show notes. I did not have a lot of gaming experience before my husband and I got together. We didn't have a game console until 2006. Oh. Um, yeah. And it was like a, it was a PS2. And I think we, the only reason we got it was for Dance Dance Revolution for my sister's graduation <laughs> party. Like that was the sole purpose behind it, buying it was DDR at my sister's graduation party. So when my husband and I bought a Switch so that we could play Mario Kart with our daughter, I got very, very happy because I am now the top of our mario kart charts at oh, our house yeah. and so it, it's a lot of fun and then he got me uh breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom which have both been amazing but talking about games and doing voiceover for games do you play any of the games that you've done voices for i've played a few is it weird hearing your own voice come out of a video game no it's fun um <laughs> i still remember the um uh, my wife actually bought me uh, or bought us a uh, GameCube just because that game came out. And then she wound up hawking, not hawking it, but she's got rid of the GameCube, but we kept the disc. It was one of those little ones. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, is that it? You know, with that game, I was like, that's, that's it. Okay. I didn't get a lot in there, did I? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But then Galaxy, when Galaxy came out, and I got to fight myself every time you're going to the next stage, mm -hmm. I was all like, dude, I sound so cool. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, and there's, uh, in Mario Kart Wii, there's an ad lib that they used. And I was actually playing it at home when I found that out. Um, when you win a race as Bowser or, well, any character, you win a race and they have their little celebration thing. They're still in mm -hmm. their cart and they're moving, but they're not holding the steering wheel anymore. Yeah. You know, they're waving their arms around and stuff. Well, if you do that as Bowser, it randomizes the, the celebration noises. And one of them, though, is... <laughs> <laughs> I did that because I ran out of stuff to do. They said, give us a whole bunch of celebratory Bowsery stuff. And, you know, yeah. so I'll go, 
And a blood, blood, blood. And then finally just like neener, neener. And they used it. They put it in the game. And I was like, I was so jazzed. I just dropped the controller. I was all like, did you guys hear that? (laughs) What? That's awesome, though. Because you never know when it's going to do it, you know? Right. It's kind of random. So, anywho. Did that answer that question? I think I did. It did. It okay, did. Good. I would just the <laughs> idea of hearing my own voice if I did video games like that is so weird to me. But I also know that I'm going to go and play any of the Mario games later and be like, <laughs> I talked to him. Well, you know, Bowser is such a. I think I've said four or five words in English in 18 years. So, uh, so but it is still. I mean, it takes sometimes four hours to record for a game. That's how much, you know, damage they try to do to me. <laughs> right. No, they're actually very, they're actually very nice about it. Um, they'll be like, okay, we're going to have you in on Monday for two hours. And then we're going to do Tuesday for two hours. And then have Wednesday, Wednesday, don't book your flight home until 3.30 in case we have to pick something up on Wednesday. Wow. But the last time I was in recording, I did it about total of three and I want to say three and a quarter hours or so. And so I got a, I woke up Wednesday. First thing I did, when I put, picked up my phone in the hotel and I looked at it. Good. There's a text message. And it was Wendy at the studio. And she was all like, it's a wrap. Have a nice trip home. And I was all like, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have to go back in and pick anything up they because um, they it usually takes overnight they they send everything to japan and mm-hmm. it all has to be approved by japan so sure that makes sense john global bowser you are i get yeah i get that question a lot though people will be uh at, at cons and stuff you know they'll be like so have you met the guy who's bowser in japan i was like i am bowser in japan I'm Bowser everywhere. That's except the movie. <laughs> except the movie, except the movie, yes. When you were replaced by Jack Black. Yeah. Oh well. Nothing I can do uh, that. I understand Hollywood, you know. I would yeah. say that's not an uncommon yeah. occurrence where the, the voice actor for the game or or even the TV shows are replaced by, you know, what they consider to be bigger name stars and yeah. you know well, of because course they want they want to do A-listers so that they can put more heinies in seats. Exactly. Yeah, they're trying to they're it, trying to put butts in seats. I get it, but it worked. I mean, yeah. oh yeah. You can see how big the fandom is for this game series yeah. franchise because in I think it was just two weekends, they globally were already near a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. That's insane. I will say I will say that I absolutely loved the movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it, so oh I thought it was hilarious, but that's just me. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. So I've seen, I've, I get a lot of people come up to my table and go, I thought the movie was really great. Did you see it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, why? And I go, why should I? Right. Yeah. I'm not in it. <laughs> right. So it's like, I'm, I'm not going to rush out to see it. Let's put it that way. I'm certainly not going to go to movie theaters. I don't like movie theaters. So right. a lot of people Fair love enough. that experience. Me. Nope. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. You know what's funny is I I used to be a big fan of movie theaters until the pandemic hit, and then I could stream movies, and I realized how much I enjoy just streaming and making my own popcorn and being able to pause it when I have to pee. You can pause. That's you know. I mean, there's a reason why they make TVs really big and really inexpensive now. Mm-hmm. Right. We can watch. We can watch things at home, you know, on a 75 inch TV or whatever. So. Right. And especially right. with a with a little kid, it's like I'm not taking her for a movie that she's going to have to pee four yeah. times during and eight times of the mom. I'm bored. <laughs> now we're going to go home. We're going to watch this at home when I can pause it or the or the just a little too loud. Why did he do that? Right. Yeah. Is that is that the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> yup. Yeah. Anyway. They said a bad word. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking of children, <laughs> thought, my da- yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I don't know about all that, but uh, so my my daughter is a huge anime fan. Me, not so much. I struggle with anime from time to time. I've tried to get into it because it's it's one of her interests, and you know, give us something to to do together and watch together. And outside of Star Wars Visions, I'm having a real hard time with with anime and and the whole the whole bit. But uh, anyway, uh, IMDb we're we're finding doesn't have all of your anime work for yeah. some reason because as we like to call. It, imdb it's the wikipedia of the entertainment world yeah um it hasn't, we have, caught, up yet. It hasn't caught up okay but you know we found out that you know you've uh there's uh listings for like one piece that you should have had on there. attack on titan my senpai is annoying uh, a few others that aren't listed Let's so see. my question my question here for you one piece there's uh miyagi okay he's, he's my most recurring character on one piece uh he's a goat and a doctor um, you know, King Fritz in uh, Attack on Titan. This one's autographed. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, nice. this, this guy was in uh, Fire Force. Did an episode of Fire Force. They uh, they offed that guy. One and done. That's what I always call it anyway. One and done. <laughs> and then this guy in uh, several episodes of um, a certain scientific railgun. And okay. Uh, Spoiler, uh, he, he pulls that trigger. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've done I've done tons of stuff that I can't even remember some of the shows because, you know, I I make a joke of it at panels, um, uh, you know, when people are they're asking questions and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing a lot of anime now, and ooh, and I go, yeah, you guys have probably heard of my uh, my most popular character, ooh, and they perk up, you know. And I go, yeah, it's additional voices. <laughs> that's that's what most of it is. You know, one episode here, one episode there, you know, man 2F, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know, done. You know, oh, you're lucky if you even get, you know, additional voices credit because sometimes it's limited uh, how many voices they can list. Mm. Uh, okay. That has to do with Japan and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't know the semantics of it all. I don't even know if that's the right word. Anyway, you are about to ask a question before I so rudely kept talking. No, no. I I shut up because I was listening to what you were saying. I liked it. So, Kenny, what what was the draw for you for anime? And what is what have you learned about or, or what was your biggest challenge in learning how to dub into those series? Well, good questions. Um, I started doing conventions in 2018. And- okay. So I was starting to rub elbow, elbows with people, you know, other people. Uh, it took me a long time to accept celebrity, um, but other other celebrities, um, <laughs> you know, like like uh, you know, I used to get the point from Alice Cooper across the green room. Cool. Uh, nice. I haven't seen him in a long time though. Um, but anyway, so I'm I'm starting to hang out with. Um, people that did anime and stuff. And I'm all like, these people are kooky. I mean, this is great. And I kept threatening to move to Dallas. You know, I was like, I'm going to move to Dallas so I can do anime, you know, and they'd be all like, you should, and I'd be, I'm gonna, we'll do it. And I will, you know? And so I went home from, I don't remember what show it was. It was probably sometime. It might've been after, uh, um, Pensacon 2019. So that would have been in January of 2019. Might have been that. Um, I, I went home and and I said, hey, what do you think about putting the house up for sale and moving to Dallas? <laughs> My wife goes, okay. <laughs> so I was like, cool. So we prepped the house, got the outside painted and all this stuff and put it on the put it on the market and it sold in its first weekend. Oh boy. So, I know. It was a 1905, really old house, and not in a really great neighborhood, but somebody wanted it, so. Perfect. Um, but anywho, so that's the first part. It was the influence of these other anime actors, and I really wanted to get into something where I could speak English. That would be great. I mean, you know, besides doing things like interrupting people's Spotify playlists, you know, to tell them about uses of 
you know, for post-it notes. <laughs> I did a whole, I did a whole series of those. You know, we interrupt your Spotify playlist, you know, to tell you about use number, you know, five of, for post-it notes. You know. Yeah, I don't remember what they were, but <laughs> either that or car commercials. I've got some East Coast somewhere in the East Coast car commercials that I've been doing and but anyway, so I wanted to do some acting, but speak English. And uh, the what I had to learn, though, and I did the same thing with anime that I did with Nintendo. I went in there acting like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's ADR. Uh, the only ADR I had ever done was a friend of mine in Bremerton, Washington, has a really nice little studio built that he built separate from his house. It's like self-contained. And um, I went and was doing some just workout stuff with him. And he he was like, okay, I want you to do this. And he had a couple pieces of copy that were uh, like network TV promos. Um, so the audio, you hear what the, the audio is from the TV show and you get beeps that lead you into, you know, Monday night on ABC. And you hear another clip because it's TV. You're watching the clip mm -hmm. and the voiceover just happens between little bits of clips, you know, and, you know, like animation domination. But um, I was like, OK, this is fun, you know, having to try to nail these things like this. Well, that's what you have to do with anime. You get beep, boop, beep, fourth imaginary beep. That's where you're supposed to go. <laughs> So you watch it in Japanese and you're looking at the script and you're trying to look at the animation at the same time. You know, I if, if we had chameleon eyes, it would make it a right. lot. It would be way easier. Um, but uh, they run it through the J or the Japanese. We just call it the J. And then immediately, pretty much, they're go. And this time the Japanese is out. You'll still hear uh, sound effects and music. And if any other English actors have already recorded, you'll hear their tracks. Mm. But sometimes you're just all by yourself. Sometimes you're the first person to record in that portion of that show. And uh, so they beep, beep, beep. And you do the line and hope that the beginning flap and the end flaps flap right. <laughs> Sometimes the internals aren't so important mm -hmm. uh, unless there's a pause or there's a reaction that's supposed to be in there. Like you're talk a talk a talk a talk a oh, talk a talk a talk a, you know, then you have to get that part right. Mm -hmm. but, um, having a, a past musical kind of a thing, you know, where I was a lead singer for a bunch of different bands. So timing just sort of is in there. So I'll watch it that one time and it's like time, 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 time. Okay. Remember that. And then when they go back and I do my own thing, then I know I've got time, 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 time. So anyway, so that's how that works. <laughs> Makes sense. I know. Five minute answer to a, a one minute question. <laughs> uh, we like, we like the long answers. That's okay. You know, what? Actually, <laughs> that way you don't to... have to ask as many questions. There's that. We talked to other voice actors too who've done um English dubs for for anime and talking about the lip flap, trying to make yeah. sure that the lip flap lines up. And I'm like, that would be really hard. And you don't want it to look like a cheesy 80s movie. You yeah, want no. to actually make sure that it, it does. You fight? Fight yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, yep. The the engineers are really good. And like um the direct well, the engineers and directors, everybody I've worked with are great. But the engineers can save you sometimes from having to do multiple takes because they'll either move something on their own or the director will look back, they'll watch it back and you're just standing in there waiting and they'll watch it back and then he'll be like, okay, can you just squish that a little bit and move it just a bit to the left, you know, or can you lengthen that just a teeny bit and then move it a little bit to the left and they move the sound to fit the video mm -hmm. but they've only they can only do so much before it gets out of like wonky 
Right. Oh, sure. And, and then you're just doing another take, you know. Um, and we're always right, uh, you know, rewriting lines in the scripts on the fly too, because sometimes uh, the adaptive script writers they'll write something, and but when you go to try to put it in practice, it's like that's just too long, or it's too short. Um, we're getting used to me uh, with Miyagi now because I decided he's a goat that I should, you know, make him goat like at times. Mm -hmm. So there'll be times where I do that. You know, I, usually it's on words that start with vowels, though, mm -hmm. so that okay. you know, everything, you know, I'll goat it up. Well, Anthony fi figured out after a while, Anthony Bowling. He was like, all right. He goes, every time you do that goatee thing, I have to remove at least a syllable. So let me, let me try this. Ticky, 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 ticky. And he changes the script and then I do it. And you know, he goes, every time you get goatee, we got to take a <laughs> syllable out. Because it does, it lengthens it. You know, instead of saying because, you go, because. Right. <laughs> whenever, you whenever, get and, whenever he gets scared or does something strenuous you know it's it's hilarious because i get all <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fun stuff as it should be oh goodness yeah, wow. oh. <laughs> while doing research for the interview i found some obscure notes on the mario wiki um that said that you had done a couple of audio series for doctor who is that accurate yeah yeah um they weren't uh I mean, you know, nothing big time, but uh, one guy uh, is in the UK and there was another one that I did that the guy was in Australia. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, some of it's pretty funny. Um, definitely the guy in the UK, um, I don't remember, don't know if he still calls his thing Damn Audio or Damn Productions. It was D-A-M um he's still got he still got a website that has all that stuff on it um but yeah i got to do some really goofy things he does a very kind of tongue-in-cheek even more cheeky than the real doctor who <laughs> that's possible okay. yeah you know so i played patty the pissed off dwarf which had it was kind of a leprechaun kind of a thing that i did with that you know, I'm a pissed off dwarf and, you know, blah, 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 you know, but I just wanted to kill him, you know. Um, and then I did the, the tartan, the tartan, the tartan guardian. That was more of a, that was more of a Scottish kind of thing. Yeah, almost like um, fat bastard. <laughs> nice. That's kind of what I was kind of going for. I go, you want me to do like a fat bastard thing? You know, and he's like, yeah, that'd probably work, you know, or he's more like, yeah, that would probably work. Actually, I've never heard him in person. <laughs> I just, I just, when I would read his emails, I would put an English accent on it. So, well, that just makes sense. I mean, <laughs> yeah, obviously well, I wrote did, it that way. Actually, well, I mean, you know, I never talked to him, but I did hear him because he always played the doctor on his own mm. series. So, yeah, I even mm. I even wrangled my wife into that once. They had, yeah, he was like, can you do all these? town people and i was like all right and then i got and one of them was a female so i got my wife to do it and all she had to do was say hey the monkey's getting away only a little more excited right um, but she doesn't do accents and uh she had never recorded anything before so i just stood her up in front of a mic and and i was like say it and she's like hey the monkey's getting away. And I go, no, do it like this. Hey, the monkey's getting away. And I would just say it. And then she would say it right after me. And then I just cut everything else out and send him that. So that's awesome. So yeah. So now, you know, we can still listen to that. And she's all like, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Stand here, say this, go. Yeah. That was what was that episode? That was what one of the things that they call short trips. Mm. Um, they're only a, a, a few minutes long. And that one was called that was Monkey Something. Ah, well, can't remember. So not associated with Big Finish Audio? No. 
Okay. Because we've talked to a couple people who are with Big Finish and they do a lot of Doctor Who audio drama type stuff. And so, um, but yeah, so when you were starting off with that, that's what I thought you were referring to. But okay. did you find it? I did. You did? I found I it. Just, Dan I was, Productions. I was just starting to search. <laughs> she's our she's our Google expert on this so show. Yeah, there's um there's several episodes that I'm in on that. I did a serious one for the guy in Australia. I played a ship captain and I didn't have to be uh like a spaceship captain. And mm-hmm. and I didn't have to have an accent. I just went with gruff American. Hey kid, you know, blah blah blah. There you go. Wow, he's got a lot of them. Oh yeah. I I, I for all I know, he's still doing those things. And I know he built a really cool TARDIS. <laughs> This will be a, a web hole. This will be a, a rabbit hole that she falls down and we'll spend much I, time on later tonight. It doesn't so. look like there's one recently, but no, no, I don't think so. Gee, um, there's the short trips, though. Um, I can't remember what the names of them. One of them had something to do with an amusement park. That was the pat one with Patty, the pissed off dwarf. And his sidekick, um, the doctor's sidekick, this guy named Mike. Mm-hmm. All he could talk about was this amusement park. You know, we can go to the haunted house and the roller coaster and the roller coaster house and the haunted roller coaster. And <laughs> it's just all these things, you know. But then uh, hell breaks loose when Patty shows up. Patty, the pissed off dwarf. Love it. Oh, my word. Um, yeah, I'm totally going to be falling down this rabbit hole later. Oh, my word. Monkey, monkey something. Dang, I can't remember. Oh well. I, I right, might Kenny's... avoid the "Here Comes the Clown." Here come the clowns episode, though. That mm, that's probably pansy. pansy. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think I was in that one. I didn't do a lot for it, but I did a few. And I think I'm on the credits. So it, when you cl- when you click on a title, it'll mm-hmm. say who's in it. You know. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a while back. It is, but it was, that was my my first microphone. Just sitting the with a regular stand, a straight microphone stand, uh, sitting on a rug so that the floor wouldn't make noise into the mic stand. Mm. It was recorded in the kitchen or no, the dining room area of this really crappy little house that we used to live in. That was just all like, eh, sounds good to me. Now I nice. can fix it better because I use Adobe Audition and I'm. <laughs> so right. I could have Track done it better. better instead of letting him do all the editing, even though um <laughs> act I, I think he may have put it on that website, the outtakes from when I was Patty the Pissed Off Dwarf. <laughs> uh yeah, because I, I screwed up a couple of times and just started laughing, but one of the one of the times that I messed up, I said, Oh, son of a bitch and crap. <laughs> and he said him and his wife just just rolled and i was all like i don't know i was just i was just messing up and i just kept rolling i didn't i didn't have a way to edit it so I, nice i would just send him raw sound files let nice. him do the edit. all right anyway <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no we love little stories like that that's great all right, so Kenny, we have a, a Facebook group with over two hundred and twelve thousand members in it, and one of the most popular topics uh, in there is memes. That's the one of the most popular things that comes in there, you know. Uh, but uh, and it's some of the tropes where you know this character finds themselves in that universe. That's always the most popular thing: the mashups where you know this guy's not supposed to be in this universe, but he is. So if you could take one of your characters and have them end up in another universe by design or by accident. Who would you pick and where would you send them? Oh, man. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to think of some something I can mash Nintendo with something else. Well, let's see. You know, people are always telling me that, oh, it must be terrible that Bowser loses all the time. I'll be at a panel. I'll be like, what? Well, you, your character gets beat all the time. And I go, how many times does Bowser whoop your ass before you figure the pattern out? Yep. 
I'll stand there and go, I'm 20 and one. (laughs) (laughs) So let's go. Let's take iron from Fire Force. We'll take iron and we'll throw him in as Bowser's backup. He's got Bowser's back because that way, maybe Mario will finally just eat it. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Fair enough. Bowser will finally get the girl. Yeah, because this guy shoots fire too, you know. <laughs> and he could uh, he could harden his skin. Martin sight. So yeah. Now I'm picturing as this guy just standing over there behind Bowser, like, suck it, pipe jockey. You know, yeah, just well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could stand, he could stand in front of Bowser. Right? You know, because Martin Sight. He was like a wrestler. That's kind of, I was like, how come you didn't get uh, Chris Rager to do this? <laughs> oh, yeah. He was all like, uh, I don't know. I don't think I could get a, I didn't get a hold of him or something. I was like, oh, good. I'll take it. There right. you go. Darn. Oh, I will take the job for him. <laughs> only one episode, but, you know. Oh, goodness. One and done, as I say, because, you know, they figured out how to take this guy out and it worked. And then his last line was, no fair. (laughs) That's sad. (laughs) Oh, goodness. So with your experience in voice acting, that from from the gist of what we're getting is all happenstance and faking it till you make it, which I think is kind of fantastic, (laughs) actually. (laughs) So what advice would you give to an aspiring voice actor to help them get started? Well, I tell you, uh, I profess theater a lot. Um, people are like, what? I, I want to be a voice actor. And I'm like, well, if you want to be a voice actor, first be an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, because voice acting is still acting. And a lot of times it's actually more stressful, I think, than acting in front of people. I don't know why. There's just something odd about being in a little room by yourself. And there's people on the other side of the glass and you're trying to do something that, that they like, and it can be kind of weird. Um, but another thing, uh, if you don't want to, you know, do community theater, it doesn't cost anything except for transportation, really. Right. Sometimes, you know, you got to go to Goodwill and try to find a costume piece or something, you know, that's where where every suit I think I've worn. No, not all of them. But every, every, almost every suit that I've had on stage has come from Goodwill. <laughs> I'd be like, ooh, this one's nice. Only 10 bucks. Cool. <laughs> hey, I look and good. One and done. <laughs> yeah. So um, another thing is um, read out loud. Practice reading because voice work is reading. Uh, and you have to be able to sound natural while you're reading. So uh, it's not also not a bad idea to record yourself while you're doing that and, and critique yourself because you can listen back to yourself and almost nobody likes the sound of their own voice. That's true. When they, when they hear it played back, um, that's because we sound different inside our head than we do to people else, outside mm-hmm. our head. Very true. Um, uh, but you can self-critique yourself. You can listen to something and go, I don't sound like real, you know, so try it again, try to loosen up, you know, try to not think about it, but you need to practice reading because when you're reading a script, you sort of have to read ahead, which doesn't sound real, but it is, you know, your, your, your brain is, you're saying one thing, but you're already scanning a word or two ahead. Mm Mm-hmm. So that you know what's coming, you know where the punctuation is, you know, because uh, there's been a lot of times where people I've heard people reading something and they had no idea that a stop was coming. And so the inflection is wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So and then, you know, you're going to have to do it again. But, you know, be able to read something and and not sound like you're reading, you know, mm-hmm. especially if it's a character of some sort. Oh, sure. Um, but there's lots of there's lots of voice work out there for people who don't want to do character work. You know, uh, Bill DeWeese in the Chicago area um, 
he has a huge YouTube channel, lots of help for people. Uh, his Twitter, he's putting videos out on Twitter all the time now uh, and some live stuff. And he coaches. He does straight work. Um, and he probably makes quarter million dollars a year or more. Makes, oh, wow. more than I do. makes a lot more than I do because I'm lazy. I'm one of the, I'm one of the laziest people in the planet. <laughs> uh, I don't actively seek work very much, you know? Um, plus I do have a, I have a pretty busy convention schedule. So yeah. So practice, um, and get a demo made. I mean, once you feel like you can get up there, uh, and you feel like you're viable, um, get a demo made because one of the first things somebody's going to ask you, if you go, I do voice work, they're going to be, where's your demo? Is right. It, and you go, I don't have one. They'll go next. Thank you. Right. Gotta go. But, uh, I'm trying to think of something else. Um, there was, I thought, something else I was going to say, but it must not have been very important. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, learn how to act, man, especially with theater, because if you can get up in front of a, a, a theater audience and do something live like that, that's an achievement. And you've been directed, you know, um, mm -hmm. you've learned how to develop a character during the process of rehearsals and all that. Um, I have no process. You know, I don't have a process. Uh, I never did when I was in theater until I started watching too many videos and things. And then I was all like, wait, should I be concentrating on the moment before? Well, what would what was my character doing right before I opened this door and walked out on stage? You know, I don't, I don't really worry about that kind of stuff. <laughs> a lot of people do. You know, they have yeah. their... They're different acting methods, you know, um, including the method. But um, there are also really great actors that are like me, uh, Bill Nighy, the from uh, Shaun of the Dead, and mm -hmm. uh, what is that, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. You know, the Octopus Head. What was mm -hmm. it? Davy Jones? Um, but I've seen hi interviews with him where he's all like, I don't. I don't really think about it. I just play the character. Just do it. Right. Like, That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Right. Practice, 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 you know, especially the reading and the, and trying to get out in front of people. Cause if you can't get out in front of people. You're not going to be able to stand in a glass, you know, a booth and, and look at somebody through the glass. That's true. It's usually it's not one person. It's an engineer, director, and one or two producers. So I've had sessions where Japan was watching me via a, a laptop that was sitting right next to the microphone. I couldn't see them, but I went, what's this? <laughs> and they go, click. They go, that's Japan. They're watching. And I was all like, I was all like whoa. So then I was like, uh, so I'm no. continuing. I well, I started goofing on them sometimes. Yeah, I would, uh, I would go, rrr, rrr. and then I'd look at the computer and go, huh? huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> so they they got a kick out of it. So, nice. That's yeah. Awesome. All right. Excellent. All right, Kenny. One final question, and we call it our silly question. So you can answer this as serious or as silly as you would like. Okay. Hey. Now, as a young person, you get may get asked this a lot, but not so much as an adult. And Kathleen and I fully believe that this should be a question that everybody gets asked. Yep. Kenny James, what's your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> That's great. Man, I, I got to say T-Rex. They are pretty the cool. first thing that popped into my head. A lot of people like the more docile, you know, veggie sauruses and stuff, but uh, I like the viciousness and the size of the teeth, all that stuff. If they really were like that and, you know, the bones are like that, we don't know that they sounded like, uh, you know, Jurassic Park, but, you know, and 
for them to, I don't get how they can say, oh, his, don't move. His movement's based on, or his vision's based on movement. And I'm like, how can you tell that from a skeleton? Yeah, right. There was etchings of a caveman who was trying to not move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I love T-Rex and, uh, and Velociraptors. Velociraptors. Nice. For some reason, I like the villain dinosaurs, you know? That's okay. Oh, yeah, I don't I don't have any idea. But then there's me with my Parasaurolophus over here that I'm like... <laughs> At least you can say it. I can. I also have a four-year-old and had to relearn how to say dinosaur names. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Kenny, we have enjoyed talking to you so much yeah, tonight. I gotta get going too. <laughs> Where can our viewers and our listeners go to find out more about you and your work? Well, I'm terrible at social media, but I'm on the Instagrams. Um, it's Kenny James Bowser. Um, I wouldn't even bother with Twitter. I never tweet. Um, but that's also if you if you look up Kenny James, it's it's still Kenny James Bowser, but because they don't have enough characters. Uh, I had to cut the E out of Bowser. Okay. So it's it's Bowser with S R at the end Bowser. instead of E R. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um Facebook, but I don't fa I don't like Facebook either. I don't blame if, you. If I'm if I do post things, it's usually on Instagram. And you know, and then it, it winds up spilling over to Facebook. But yeah. Right. The auto share. I need to start doing live stuff again every once in a while. But, um, and also people can get a really cool, uh, Bowser scarf, um, or, uh, she's doing Pokemon and stuff now too. And she does Harry Potter themed stuff. My wife knits and she makes Ooh. these really soft, cool looking scarves that she just, she comes up with the patterns herself and oh nice. Uh, she's on the Instagrams, but it's a comp. She didn't. She doesn't she doesn't know how to do stuff. <laughs> so her 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 name on there is like C dot J dot S underscore custom underscore crafts. <laughs> but I bet if you just put CJ's custom crafts, it'll probably pop up. But yeah, she's she'll make stuff to order, you know. Oh, that's but, cool. And it doesn't check take that out. But she she loves that's all she does. She gets home, she changes clothes. If food's ready, she'll get some food. And then she's back at it. That's yeah, awesome. Either that or crocheting. She makes these really cool little animal uh, cozies for uh, like stemless wine glasses. Oh, cool. They got little animal faces on them. So they're, yeah, they're, they're cute. She does good work. She likes That's it. Awesome. awesome. Well, we will definitely link your socials and your wife's social because um, yeah. and now I want to go look at her. her hey, well, good because, you know, the last pa podcast I did, she wound up, I don't know, some guy wanted all kinds of stuff. And then Ooh. he also wanted one of these. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. These are hard to find. Actually, I don't think they make these anymore. Uh, this was officially licensed. Um, but it's a six by six canvas with a wooden frame. Mm -hmm. um, and I I took paint pens and colored it. And she took pictures and then I autograph it and off it goes. That's awesome. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. And I tried to find some more of those because I was like, I should take I should keep these on my table. But it's yeah. it's gonna be spendy for me to color that in front of somebody. So that it's, you know, they know it's legit, you know, he mm -hmm. comes right. right in front of me. That's going to cost you. <laughs> <laughs> if, autographs, if autographs are 40 bucks, that's going to cost you. you know? Yeah, no, no, I get to that. Yeah, makes sense. Anywho. Well, that's awesome. I love doing conventions, though. Get to hang out with fans all day. It's freaking great. Right? Keeps my ego inflated. <laughs> Sometimes a couple of months between shows, and I'm all like, I'm nobody. <laughs> they forgot to the show, and it's all like, oh, yes, Mr. James, we have your car waiting. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, 
All right, guys. Hey, we want to remind you right now that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to help our show continue to grow and get these amazing guests like Kenny James to come on and talk with us uh, about his career, what he does, and have funny moments for you guys to be able to listen to. So please subscribe. And and it really, honestly, it helps out more than, than we could ever tell you. But go check out Kenny's work and his wife's uh, uh, Instagram as well. We'll have those down in the show notes below for you guys to be able to follow along and uh, see what they've what they've got going on and, and order yourself some cool stuff. Now, however, if you are not happy with the content of our show today, please feel free to lodge a complaint with the head of our complaint department. That, of course, is Bowser, King Koopa himself. <laughs> we We're can so run. Doomed. We can run. We can hide. We can even have Toad tell him that we're in another castle, but he knows better. <laughs> He invented that shtick. So please give us a suitable head start and maybe even a superstar to give us a bit of an advantage. We're not fireproof, guys. We're only podcasters. Thank you, Kenny. We've really enjoyed your time. Thank you, man. It was fun. I appreciate it. All right, guys. That's going to conclude us for the FSF podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Copyright 2023 FSF podcast. Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by FSF Popcast. The views expressed by the guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at info at FSFpopcast.com. Original music by Jordan Michaels.